Welcome to Loving Beyond the I Do Podcast. This power couple is building stronger marriages one day at a time. Talking about real issues on love, relationships, and marriage longevity. Let's break down the barriers and engage in healthy conversation with your hosts, Jason and Tina Marie. Take a seat and buckle up because things are about to get real. Hey, hey, welcome to the show. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Loving Beyond the I Do podcast with your host, Jason and (laughs) Tina Marie. That's me. All right, so let's get into this week's episode, Jason. So who do we have with us this week? Uh, we have Elisa DeLorenzo. I hope uh, I didn't mess that last name up. Oh, <laughs> let's bring her in. Let's, you you right, think Elisa, too much. You think too much. I do, I do. <laughs> I'm like, watch her. like, oh, I know what he's thinking. You know, fine. You're good. You're good. <laughs> so welcome to the show, Alisa. Tell us a little bit about you. Well, um, like you said, my name is Alisa DiLorenzo. I have been married for 25 years now. Um, my husband and I, about 12 years ago, started our business called One Extraordinary Marriage, and we've been impacting marriages around the world now for the last 12 years. Wonderful, wonderful. Nice. And so what made you start impacting marriages? What made you guys decide on that? Yeah, what were you trying to fix? Because you're probably trying to fix something. I was trying to fix something. (laughs) Right. You know, really, it was one of those things where we, you know, a couple years prior to that had gotten to a point where our own marriage was not good. We were most definitely living as roommates and not as lovers. And we got radical about changing that. And in that process, we realized that there were a lot of people that wanted something different in their marriage, but they didn't know where to find it. And so we went after trying to help them find it. And so when you said you realized that you were roommates, was it the thirst station or the need for more? Is that what brought you to that? Because so many times people don't even realize they're roommates. They, right. It's, it's kind of like, expect it right after a while the the intimacy the love dies down and we're just existing Mm -hmm. so was it the crave and the need for more it was it was getting to that point where you know in all honesty our kids were two and five at the time wow and Mm -hmm. we started looking at the fact that we had a couple options um divorce had been talked about like Mm -hmm. this is we're not doing good and we're not enjoying each other. So maybe, maybe we just cut the ties. Um, we looked at that two-year-old and said, maybe we do what's pretty common. We stick it out for the sake of the kids. <laughs> right. For the kids, right? For the kids. But then mm-hmm. I was looking at that two-year-old going, that is a long time to be miserable. <laughs> <laughs> like she, she is now 16. And, and like, I, when I look back at, at her two-year-old self and I think, oh my gosh, like if we hadn't done something, how miserable the last 14 years have been. And then, you know, the third option was do something drastically different. And I'm married to a guy, Tony, he's, you know, this wonderful man, and he is the eternal optimist. He's a big visionary. And he's like, you know what? Divorce is not, I don't want divorce to be an option. I don't want that to be our story. We're not going to be miserable. So we're going to do something different. All right. All right. right. It's funny how you said divorce was that you guys had talked about it. It's, it's so often that that's usually the first thing we turn to. That's the only thing right? we know. I mean, like if it's not working, we talk about divorce. Yeah. So many people don't realize that there's an, as in yours, option C, right? Or the third option, let's do something. Let's do something to change it around. So what exactly did you guys do to be radical? So we, we embarked on a 60 day sex challenge. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's mostly for like, oh, that'll, fix, that'll fix anything, I think. <laughs> well, you know, just, it's so funny that you say that because a lot of men are like, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, what else you got? Because that, like, we don't even need to go past that. But in all honesty, what started is, as this idea about being intentional about one area of our marriage, the sexual intimacy really became this all-encompassing look at our marriage and this focus on putting one another first in every area about being intentional about making the marriage, the priority instead of everything else in our world. 
I can't help but to ask the question. Normally, like you said, most men are like, okay, game on. Like, that's wonderful. But from a woman's perspective, most women are like, why are we having sex? Like, why would I, why would I, because we, well, most women think okay. that we're giving in to the man's <laughs> needs, right? This is what they want. So why are we giving it to their, their needs? Was that your first um, look? Was that your first, like, okay, wait a minute. Wait, a, so this is something that he wants. Was that the first the way, the way you looked at it? My first reaction to him right, when he proposed it was actually to say no. Like, absolutely <laughs> not. Like, if you want, if you're honest to me, my first reaction, like, I don't even know that he finished the sentence when he's like, hey, maybe, because we were, what happened was we were leading a small group at our church that was going to be about eight weeks. And Tony's, you know, like, let's just round up and let's make it 60 days. And let's do this, this challenge. We had heard about other couples doing sex challenges. And my first reaction was that, like, why are we going to, like, we, ha- we aren't having sex. Like, what is this going to do? This right. Is- what is the point? I wasn't even thinking about whether or not I wanted to have sex with him. I just didn't see it as a solution. I didn't right. see it as something that was going to draw us closer. And, you know, I tell people, I, I literally had a come to Jesus moment in my garage with a basketball of laundry where I heard this voice say, if you aren't willing to put your marriage first, you're not going to have a marriage. Mm. And so I was like, all right. And, you know, truth be told, I did enjoy having sex. I still do. Like we have the best sex of our lives now, 25 plus years later. But we, what happened in that time was that we learned how to connect again. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yes. When we stop, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Did you want to go? I just said when we stop using sex women as a tool for um, getting what we want or thinking that we're, we're withholding it and it's something that they need and we need the same thing. Once we realize sex is something that both people need, we just right. have to incorporate it into our marriages. Then we realize the joy that it can bring and that it should bring, that it should continue to bring, right? Because when we first get together, what's the first thing we do after we get married? We consummate, right? (laughs) So we consummate it with with sex. And there's a reason why we do that because the enjoyment of it between two women, I mean, between two people, married, I I can't believe I said two women. Excuse that, scratch that. (laughs) Between two people um, becoming one, right? Enjoying each other Mm -hmm. and... uh, being able to be themselves in an intimate setting where they don't have to pretend to be someone else. So how did it start? How did, when your marriage decided to embark on this, where did it lead you and what did you get you guys realize? Well, you know, I look back and I can even to this day, and you know, it's been, gosh, I think like 14 years now, right? Like I can envision where we were when we were having some of the best conversations that we, that we hadn't had in years. I remember driving along, we had this, you know, Midnight blue Dodge Caravan at the point in time because you know two and five you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's the caravan time. It's the caravan thing. Kids were at a sitter's house, so you know we're going out in style that night. <laughs> right. I remember Tony was driving. And I remember looking over at him and just having the thought go through my head. I really love this man. He's fun. We enjoy being with each other. And in all honesty, that was probably the first time in years mm. that I had had that thought because we were in the trenches with little kids and running a business, you know, he had his own business and doing these kind of things. And what, what started to shift was we were looking at our marriage with fresh eyes. We were having conversations we hadn't had in years. We were having fun together. We were, we were talking about our finances. We were talking about, like we were talking and incorporating all of these different things Mm -hmm. back into our marriage. And all of a sudden it was like, I tell people, I'm like, it was like being newlyweds again, but so much better because we had all this experience. Mm-hmm. We at the beginning, we were, you know, in our case now, about halfway through. You know, it's funny. It's it's always the beginning when you first meet someone and the relationship is new and you learn each other and everything is just so wonderful. And I think <clears throat> after kids come, because kids do change your relationship, right? After they come, you're like, I want that back again. I want that feeling back. And we're always like chasing that I want that feeling and I can't really get it right now. And all this other stuff is in the, in the way. And this is the reason why I can't have it. So you still, you're still withdrawn um, from the person. And it, it's really hard to, to um, try to get that feeling back. I think you should just start from where you're at and just relearn and how to, you know, relearn each other and how to deal with the situation at hand, because now you have kids and now the dynamics has changed. <laughs> but but as you said, I think it's the point of putting everything else first. That's what we that's where marriages go wrong. We put our jobs first. We put our kids first. We put our, you know, um, 
soccer first, anything, anything yeah. except the marriage. And we don't realize that yeah, we're doing that relationship for sure. And, and it's just the issue that we have, um, I, I think pretty much been taught that, right. You put every, you, you take care of everything as a wife and as a parent. And we, we just never learned that the marriage should be, um, something that we continually maintain. Well, and, and as I say a lot of times to my coaching clients, look, you know, if we do our jobs well in somewhere between 18 to 20 years, those little human beings that we've brought into the world should get up and leave our home. Should get. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's the goal. Right. Yeah. And if not, as Tony often says, he goes, or we'll just lock and change the locks. Right. And then they won't have <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, eventually it's going to be the two of you again. And what are you going to have? And, and I think part of the epidemic that we see is, you know, couples get through, you know, 20, 25 years of marriage, right. they grow up and grow out. And then we're staring at this going, I, I, I don't know you, right. and I want Absolutely. To you, but we haven't cultivated them. And so, you know, let me go find that somewhere else. Right. Yeah, right. right. Absolutely. And that's why you guys are doing what you do. And we're doing what we do. Absolutely. Say, Let's bring it back into this relationship. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I think, again, we so often, um, some marriages don't realize that till till late. Mm -hmm. Right. But if, but if we look outside the marriage to seek someone else, we're doing the same thing. Right. We're starting to learn that person that we're seeking and it's exciting for people, but you can have that same thing in your marriage. And that's what we have to continue to spread the word that, Marriage can be happy and That's sexually fulfilled yes. and exciting again, right? Well, and and that's why I love what you guys do because we are pushing back against that narrative. Yes. Absolutely. Right? Oh, I mean, I we have couples in our community who have been married 30, 40 plus years who will tell you they're having the best sex of their lives, mm-hmm. which flies in the face of every cultural norm that says the best sex of your life is going to be at the honeymoon. And then it literally is just, it, just, it goes off the cliff. Right. Yeah. Right. You're done. You're done. Right. It's just going to be miserable forever. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to have the best conversations at the beginning. You don't have to have the best times at the beginning. As you get to know each other and you continue to grow and learn who your spouse is, have them 30, those conversations, 30 years in 50 years in. keep growing and changing together. I, I think that the re- relation, I mean, not the relationship, the conversation is more rich as you progress and you grow with each other. I mean, you can get more in depth because you don't really know well, if you're young. I mean, like we've been married 30 years. Well, when we got married. We, we didn't know what was going on. We was hopeful. I mean, we loved each other and everything was all, you know, the grass was all green and everything. And then, you know, now we can have those real conversations with some meat on the bone. And the thing is that when you first meet your, your mate, right, you're spending hours talking. Yes. And mm-hmm. so even after kids or after, you know, um, a long career or extensive education, we still draw apart from each other. So we can still get to learn each other again. And it can be just as exciting. You're like, wow. I know when, when our kids first left the nest, we were excited. Oh yeah. We were so excited. I got my life back. I couldn't believe that there were people like we ran into people that said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm I'm like, like, are you kidding? I know exactly what I'm going to do. I was like, oh my God. I said, you know, just, take your eye off of your children and right. realize what you can have with your spouse. And I was like, it's the best thing since sliced bread. Are oh you kidding goodness. me? This is I'm like, Oh my God. I, we have, been- <laughs> I have my own time. I don't have to be somewhere because they have to be somewhere. I go when I want to go. I'm like, Oh, it was just the, the thrill of just us again. Right. Yes. Reacquainting with the person that you married. And now, as you said, you draw apart, but getting to know that person again, not only that, but getting to enjoy Things at where you are now, mm-hmm. meeting the person where they are now, instead of saying, well, you used to be like this. Now we're, we're redefining ourselves into what we really like, what we can continue to do. So what did you and your husband embark on after the 60 days? So sex was good. You got to know each other. You were like, now wow. You, now you're back on good footing now. Come <laughs> now, on now. Now, yeah. like, now, things were really now tear up the divorce papers. <laughs> let's let's get up. <laughs> so what did you guys do there to continue the up. Well, so from there, we embarked on what we've been doing ever since, which is called the intimacy lifestyle, specifically for our sexual intimacy. And that was, you know, sitting down and actually having a conversation. What do we want our sexual intimacy to look like? Because that, that had been a broken area of our marriage. It had been where it was hit or miss. It had been where, you know, honesty, I never initiated 
sex. I was like, look, we're married. You can take me. I'll decide if we're going to have it or not. Rejection was the thing. Like all of these things were factors. And so we, we put that in place. The way it works in our marriage, we have sex. Our minimum is twice a week. We each take turns initiating. We romance one another. We, we get into all of that. But, but above and beyond the sexual intimacy, we really started looking at our marriage. And that's when we started studying marriage mm-hmm. to say, it's not just sex. I know a lot of people are like, oh, we'll just have more sex or you guys. Right. Did exactly. Did that and that's amazing. But like I say in, in our latest book, you can't have sex 24 hours a day. Nope. You, you can't. can't. I know a lot of people think that would be amazing, but you can't physically, you cannot do it. Nope. So you have to look at your marriage in its entirety. And so we started getting really intentional about our conversations, right? And making, and actually putting one another on our calendar and saying, you're so important. There's going to be a little time slot on there that says, Tony, or Lisa. <laughs> right, right. And I, yeah. Wait, wait a minute. I mean, I, I like the idea. Of, but I'm uh, just saying, I think that's, and I hate to cut you off. Yeah. I think that's part of the key, right? Realizing that you're important. And that's the only thing we want. We just want, as women, we want to feel loved and that we're important enough that they think of us. And as men, they just want to be respected and loved and felt like they're important. Right. Because if everything else is at the top of your list and then you're always saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, then that means that I'm not important enough for you to take the time. Go ahead, Jace. My apologies. Right. That's okay. <laughs> I, I held that thought and I kept saying it in my head so I wouldn't forget it. <laughs> okay. You better stop before I know, you forget. Before go ahead. I forget. Now I want to go back to the whole scheduling thing here, uh, uh-huh. Alisa. All yeah. right. All right. So we schedule our time to be together, right? And I know it's going to be next Tuesday, just like it was this Tuesday, right? Is it the same day on the, on the calendar or do we, or do we rotate? Okay, so switch it up. Two things there that we're talking about. Um, I'll, I'll describe how we schedule our in- sexual intimacy, but the other stuff, like what I'm saying, Tony and I have each other on a calendar. That's mm-hmm. time for dates. That's time for right. conversations. Oh, okay, those okay. Get scheduled. As that's far right. as what our intimacy schedule looks like, those two times a week, uh-huh. we we looked at the seven days in a week, and we said there are two three day windows in there. It's amazing how you know three times two equals six. It works out mm-hmm. perfectly. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And it, it's not complicated then, right? Right. <laughs> Easy math. Um, this was pre-Common Core and all that kind of stuff. We just kept it simple. So <laughs> Tony and I said, okay, well, what's that going to look like? So he he has the privilege to initiate on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So oh. during that window, we still have all the creativity. We have all the spontaneity. We have okay. romance. We have initiating all of that kind of stuff. I don't know exactly when. Okay. But he's staying in tune with me. He's looking at my calendar. He's asking how my day is going. He's doing all of these things because he's looking for the best window. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. I, we take Wednesdays off or we we can call that our bonus day, which we do because sometimes we're just like, oh, let's throw an extra one in. Um, but we typically have a really full schedule on Wednesdays. So that's kind of, you know, it's just a, a pause there. And then I have Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we each have a weekend day, you know, and, and I get the privilege to, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking at his schedule. I'm asking him how he's doing. We're checking in with each other. I'm flirting. I'm sending texts. So we're, we're bringing in the best of both worlds. We know what's on the calendar, mm-hmm. right? Just like you were saying, Tina Marie, we want to feel important. We want to know that we're so important. We'll make it to your calendar. Sure. I just <laughs> want to feel the same way, right? right? Like, tell me I'm important to you. Right. Then we're bringing in the flirting and the romance and the initiating. So it's not just, well, you know what? It's nine o'clock on Tuesday. Hey, it's time. That's start. what went to my head. I was like, okay, J- that's Jason, so we should, they, only, they only do it twice a week. So maybe we should tone it down. Maybe we should go. Just, to, nah, baby. No, no, no. I think I'm home. We still have one at home. And in all honesty, I mean, that's the minimum for the, what we decided was our minimum. And okay. it's just the rhythm that we flow into. There are couples in the one family that, and we tell people all the time, we're like adapt the intimacy lifestyle to the season of life that you're in and how the two of you, what the two of you want. Don't be Tony and Lisa. Oh, okay. All right. oh, <laughs> Lisa, you just blew it for me, right? <laughs> oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> All right. All right. So okay. what are some of the other things that you guys incorporated into your lifestyle that, cause I know, like you said, it's not, I always say, um, Sex doesn't make a marriage, but sex will break a marriage, right? So it's the sex that ties everything together because it's the intimacy. It's the I love you. It's not just the act of sex. It's the actual love. So what else did you guys do that other couples can do that helped bridge the gap? 
So we, we started looking at all the different intimacies in marriage and we started with the emotional intimacy and said, you know what, we need to actually have conversations again. Right? All right. Like we can't just be talking about the, you know, that whole season with kids. We can't just be talking about their schedules, their needs. Exactly. Meetings, the calendar. And so we, there were two things that we put into place there. One is called the walk and talk. Like we, will okay. get out, we live in San Diego. We'll get out on a Saturday. We'll go for a walk. We're walking side by side which mm-hmm. can be a lot less intimidating than sitting across from somebody and going, Hey, we need to have a talk. <laughs> you know, right. You're staring at their face going, right. okay, you start. No, you start. <laughs> yeah. And then it just becomes, you know what? We don't want to talk about this. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but what we found is that when we were side by side, because it was less intimidating, because it was less confrontational, we could actually get into those deeper talks. Convers- so okay. When you're mm-hmm. moving, you know, and, and maybe it's a slightly emotionally charged topic. It's a lot easier if your body's in motion than if you're mm-hmm. trying to sit still, but you're like, oh, I'm feeling that inside. I'm feeling those emotions. You have an outlet for it. So we started doing that. And we also implemented what we call the coffee break. And this is actually a weekly marriage meeting that we have that partly talks logistics, mm-hmm. but partly talks check-in. You know, it's kind of like a performance review. How am I doing? Exactly. Exactly. Sure. Love it. Love yeah. it. Am I showing up in the way that I need to show up? And if I check in with you every week, then guess what? You can't fall too far. Right. You can't get too much into it, you know, going off the deep end Mm -hmm. because, hey, we just had a conversation last week. And if something happens, it could be like, hey, you were you were really distracted this week. Well, maybe there was a big project at work or maybe, you know, like Tony's sick right now. And so he's completely just, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm not even talking to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're big babies when we get sick. Right, so right, right. Right. No, I've been checking in on them all day. But um, but we really started focusing on the emotional intimacy because what we realized was that everything that happened in our marriage, whether we're talking finances or faith or, you know, what we were doing for fun or even our sexual intimacy, like that all revolved around how are we communicating with one another? Exactly. Another. Okay. So we started there. Mm. And it could it only helped the communication barrier, correct? Well, of course. Yeah. So did now you that's... find that there was a gap in the communication? Like you said, the, you know, things that were awkward. Now that you're able to communicate, did you have to find new ways of communicating? Because sometimes um, we, we were set and we start habits, right? And so I'm saying one thing, but you're hearing another. So was there a communication gap that you actually had to say, okay, there's a gap there. Let's try to fix it. Yeah. And I wouldn't say so much that we had gaps, but there were definitely skills that we had to develop. Okay. Um, Because, you know, most of the time it's been my experience. I've been coaching people now, couples for about nine years. We're never like, if we don't see our parents have great communication and most people don't see exactly, every conversation exactly. how the dad had. So you don't know how they're talking about finances and you definitely don't know how they're talking about sex or, mm-hmm. you know. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. You get married and you're just supposed to figure it out. And a lot of times what happens is that there's there are just skills that need to be developed. How do I become aware of my tone of voice? Mm-hmm. Right? That, that's why yeah, you're shaking your head. Yeah. That's, sometimes, like we're just not aware. Right. Right. But I can have, and Tony's said it many times, um, my mom, I goes up and I can take a really sharp tone of voice. <laughs> <laughs> Why we don't sit across from each other. He's like, that, I feel good. I can do the kids and not happening. Um, but I had to become aware of that. And I actually right. take ownership of it and say, exactly. It's effective. Right. I had to learn how to ask questions instead of making the assumption I knew what Tony was talking about. You know, we we incorporated this question into our marriage and it's been a game changer. I'll be like, well, well, what does that actually mean? What does that mean to you? Right. right. Because you can hear a word like but you mentioned it earlier, Tim Marie. You can hear a word like respect. Right. We mm-hmm. hear men, men want to be respected. Right. But, Jason, I could ask you, I could ask Tony and I could ask 10 other guys. What does what respect is- mean? And I right. promise you. I'll get 12 different answers. Absolutely. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. But if I just take in, well, okay, Tony's asked, Tony says he wants to be respected. And I'm thinking, okay, well, how did, how did my dad want to be respected? How did the men in my life want to be respected? And mm-hmm. I operate out of that. I could be completely missing the boat and we're having this friction. And I'm like, I am respecting you. <laughs> I, I heard that tone in your voice. Yeah. It went up. Yeah. It went up. I, yeah. That's the one. <laughs> And so, so getting into this place where uh, for both husband and wife saying, Hey, I don't want to misunderstand you. So how does that look? What does that mean to you? Exactly. Now all of a sudden I'm trying to understand you. I'm not trying to make, put my own assumptions or perceptions on you. 
And so we started developing that. We started developing how do we break our own conflict cycles, right? I mean, that's a huge one because- Sure, yeah, just keeping the conflict. cycle short. <laughs> 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 or for men, non-existent, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So we know that you guys wrote a book, yeah. which was primarily you, probably because Lisa, because you have a lot to say, and men just chime in sometimes. So it, it did. Listen, say, listen. <laughs> the men are the bullet points in the strong bolded area in the book. So what do you want to say about this? So you're like, what do you want to say about this, Tony? Uh, he has yeah. two sentences. All right, sounds good. Right. How about this chapter? And we right? nail it right there. So, so just one funny thing about that. So every chapter around the six pillars does have the section called Tony's thoughts. And we were, we were recently <laughs> recording the audio book, right? Because our audio, we always do an audio book for every title that we have. And, and we get to one section and he's written quite a bit, right? Like, I'm like, wow. And he starts reading it. And he's like, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and the book is 200 pages long. You have like 12 pages in the book, right? This is just a longer one. Just go with it. Just go with it. <laughs> so he was um, shocked. He couldn't believe he had so much to say. Uh, yeah. So I must say, much must ask, which chapter was that? Uh, it was probably so funny. I think it might have been actually, I think it was around spiritual intimacy because okay. he included the footprints poem and he, he actually read it out loud. Okay. Um, so I think that was the long one where he was just okay. like, <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. honey, this is pages. <laughs> Right. Out of I'm two, loving it, but it's pages. Out of 200 pages, you wrote 12. Like, <laughs> But those were some 12 <laughs> strong so, pages. So share with us your book title and the pillars, if you don't yeah. mind. So the title of the book is The Six Pillars of Intimacy. Okay. And those six pillars, and I've kind of alluded to them a little bit here as we've been talking, but the first one is emotional intimacy. So you have emotional, physical, which is all your non-sexual touch, financial, everything related to finances and family. Um, then you have spiritual faith and all that comes with that. Um, recreational, the things that you do for fun and the one that we've already talked about a little bit, uh, sexual intimacy. So I have a question for you for those couples out there that, um, uh, maybe one mate likes to do a lot of recreational things and the other mate doesn't, what would you, um, give as a suggestion for them in that capacity as far as recreation? So it's super important. Yeah. And, and I, I love your show, you know, going beyond the idea, loving beyond the I do and getting into this place because truth of the matter is most couples before the I do, mm -hmm. they go all the way back there, <laughs> yeah. they were doing things together. Oh, they were. And, and they were doing things that maybe, Maybe they didn't love, but you know what? Because you suggested it and you're cute and I want to spend time with you. Exactly. You know what? I don't care. I just, you look good. I'm coming with you. Whatever it is. <laughs> I want to one day say I do, right? So we're willing to do it. Right. And so what I would say is you've got to go back to that place. Okay. Right. You. What happens so often after the I do is that we just start saying no. No, I don't oh. want to. No, I'm not interested. No, I'm too busy. Like, let's get back to if we were dating and we would have said yes, because you're cute and I just want to spend time with you. Let's do it again. Right. And, and let's start having those conversations about, OK, well, maybe, you know, case in point, there was a couple I worked with years ago. They married later in life and she was a huge NASCAR fan. Like, OK, NASCAR. She loved NASCAR and he loved going to the shooting range. Right. To mm -hmm. You know, they've got these two hobbies. They get married and they get really irritated. I mentioned it in the book. They get really irritated. That the other one is spending so much time. Must have, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Doing what they love, right? Because we're like, right. well, if you don't want to do it with me, then guess what? I'm still going to do it by myself. And you don't exactly. And then you start to, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the resentment comes and you yep. get the arguments yep. and all that. And so, so they have this conversation and they decide, okay, well, I'm going to introduce, basically, I'm going to introduce you to what I love. Mm -hmm. So she takes him to these NASCAR races and he's like, wait a minute, this is awesome. And so he like, they like two different drivers, but they can actually, you know, be nice enough during the races and, and go. Do <laughs> <laughs> he takes her to the shooting range. It turns out she's like an expert markswoman. Wow. And so he's like, he has, to go buy her, he has to go buy her a gun so that she, he stops, you know, having to like right. run her or do it for her. And, and the reason I share that story in the book is because one, you may actually discover stuff that you didn't know that you liked but you're too busy saying no that you don't even give your spouse an opportunity to share a part of themselves. Right. You, you may find that 
the way your spouse wants to do something, it's different than you, but guess what? You can bring your own flair to it and you can introduce them to different things. And so it becomes like, we shouldn't ever stop having fun just because we've been married 20 years. Absolutely. <laughs> had to stop. Yes. I think that's what keeps us so young. We're both oh, so yeah, silly. Sure. We love having yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. true. <laughs> right. And, and as you said, our title was that most often in the past, we were never told about marriage. We weren't taught marriage. And um, as I've said in pre you know previous shows, we have to start look at it, looking at it as a business, right? Mm -hmm. So we so often think that we get married and everything is just going to stay the same. There's nothing in life that I can think of that once you obtain, you don't have to maintain. Mm -hmm. Like I'm thinking, okay, what, what, you know, anything. Any. And right. so we, we do all these other maintenance in our job, in our education, in our car, in our homes, with our children. But we never think about it in marriage. And that's why we came up with the love and beyond the I do. Because so often after you say I do, the love really does dissipate, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And people don't know how to get it back. And so we're trying to help it with your book and with having guests like you so that people can understand that marriage and happiness All can right. be in the same sentence, right? <clears throat> yeah. We can, <laughs> along with sex, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's unfortunate that Tony is sick because I was telling Jason, we have to have both of you guys on because of course there's two different perspectives to every marriage. And we definitely want to hear from the man's perspective, you know, what men think in marriage and how he felt at that point of despair in marriage. Like he said, I don't want to get a divorce. But when you guys wrote the book, yeah. How even more did you learn about each other and learn about what marriage could be? Well, I will tell you that writing a book, and I've said this ever since our first book 10, 11 years ago, writing a book is like having a baby. Really? Oh. Yes. <laughs> um, the idea sounds amazing, right? Like, mm -hmm. this is going to be so good. <laughs> even getting started is amazing. It, like, it's incredible. You're like, oh my, I mean, let's face it, making a baby, the beginning part, Awesome. Um, <laughs> we're putting the first words down around a book, but then there's this whole process of writing a book and rewrites and editors saying that makes absolutely no sense and that you didn't even bring that up before. So where is this idea coming from? <laughs> and, and so you're in that middle stage and then you start nesting. You're like, oh my gosh, this book is coming. Like it's going to go to print and I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And so we did that all. This book went from first word to, um, to print in five months. So it was actually a little shorter than a baby, but in the process, this was actually the first book that we've written that even when we had really difficult points where, you know, there might be a difference of opinion on everything from, um, what well, some, in some chapters, even a word choice to, you know, how, what's the format going to look like? What's the answer? I could tell that our emotional intimacy had grown so much because okay. the first book where it didn't kind of come down to one of those arguments where I'm like, nope, I'm done talking. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm the one doing all this work. I'm putting all these words on paper. So this is the way it's going to, and I've had that experience in previous books. Um, I, I remember, especially with like our first one, you know, growth. Was, wow. That was the growth in the emotional. I was so aware of the emotional intimacy. And, and even as we were recording the audio book, just um, in the week between Christmas and new year's, even rereading the book out loud, I was struck by just how strong the framework is and how mm -hmm. many couples we've seen be impacted by this framework. Like, like I would tear up reading the book. Wonderful. Because I would just, I would hear, I would hear my own words coming back to me, um, which is a very surreal experience. But, but just in that place of going, so many people's lives have already been changed by these concepts and knowing that as the book is re-released in audio, it's already out in paperback. There are just couples literally around the world who are seeing their marriage transformed. Wonderful. Wonderful. So what made you pick the pillars in the order that you did in the book? I know you say you start off with emotional, uh, then physical and stuff. So tell me a little bit about the order. So, you know, emotional and sexual anchor, either side of the six, right? So we start with emotional, we call it in, and we've used this term, for years now, emotional intimacy is the workhorse, right? Mm -hmm. You can't do anything else if you can't talk, if you can't share your emotions, if it's not safe. So we start with emotional and we end with sexual because everybody, like the minute they hear the word intimacy, they think we're talking about sex and we're like, yep. exactly. 
hold on, you, you, you got to work on this other stuff before we can get there. You know, we're not just jumping into bed. Um, as far as the four in the middle, we, we started, you know, pulling them apart and sequencing them um, emotional. And then the physical came second because that was the touch, right? Like, what does it look like to to have that touch that feels safe, to have that touch that says, I love you and to bring people in. Um, and then going from there into finances, you know, mm -hmm. the two in the middle, finances and spiritual, those are the ones that um, for a lot of couples, it's a brand new concept, right? Mm -hmm. like financial intimacy sounds like, do those two words even belong to each other? Who <laughs> 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 would put those right? Right. <laughs> you just said money and you said intimate. Like there is no way in my Peanut butter and ketchup? It was like peanut <laughs> butter and ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's actually really good. I might have to use that. <laughs> um, All right. But- but we wanted to we wanted to create a safe space for couples to be able to talk specifically about those two intimacies because they're new concepts, mm -hmm. right? And then coming after that, so that's the financial and the spiritual. And then the recreational, we were starting to introduce that concept of fun and what are the things that you do to create the memories. And then again, like I said, end with sexual. Wonderful, wonderful. Was it hard to um, write for you as far as physical and letting people know physical does not mean sexual? Was it hard to put that into words and especially with men, you know, cause I think men kind of, kind of blur the line there. Well, what we found Tamri, over the years, cause we started pulling physical. So our very first book stripped down 13 keys to unlocking intimacy in your marriage. In that one, we had physical and sexual synonymous, right? Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Wow. That, mm -hmm. was, that was, like I said, a million moons ago. Um, but over the last, 12 years, we've really been looking at this and going, wait a minute, they're not. And so we've been mm -hmm. sharing with our audience for a lot of years that physical intimacy is not sexual intimacy. But a lot of people have gotten confused, I think, over time when when they hear that, well, my spouse's love language is physical touch and that exactly. there's automatically this assumption that it's sexual. Sex. In exactly. Right. But to your question about men, for a lot of men, it's actually really helpful to be able to pull those two out and make them separate because now, like I had a husband, um, I was coaching this couple the other night and they're going through some, just some difficult family situations with extended mm -hmm. family. And so the husband was actually able to say to his wife one time, you know, in between sessions, he goes, I just need you to hug me. Like what I'm going through. I just, and she knew in that moment because they've been working on all their pillars. Right. That it wasn't like he was asking for a hug. For sex. He right. Sex. He was just in a place of deep hurt and he just needed his wife's arms around him. And so even this understanding of physical intimacy is actually allowing both men and women to ask specifically for what they need. I need, I need you to hold me. I need you to kiss me. I need you to put your arm around me. I need you just to, you know, give me a foot massage. And, and so there's this vocabulary that is being deepened between couples because they're not thinking, Hey, I need, I want you to do something with me and let's have sex. Right. Differentiate physical intimacy, or they can use the language around sexual intimacy, and so it's not this tug of war anymore in the marriage. So it's helping them to develop the more physical intimacy a little bit better instead of kind of blurring it. Yeah, yeah. I read it. I think it's on the physical touch, uh, if I'm not, or emotional. When Tony, you put his hands on you uh, on your leg as you drove down. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's our, so yeah, Tony, Tony often drives when we're out and he, he does have a greater need for physical intimacy than I do. Um, and it's not something that comes to mind. And so he, for years, he's been like, would you just like, I would love it if you would just put your hand on my knee when I'm driving. And I'm like, that's so weird. Like, I don't even think about it. Like, what is that? And so I, I share in the book and I actually had one of my coaching clients relay that same part of the, the book back to me the other day during a session. Cause she's like, Oh my gosh, Elise, I do the same thing. Like I have to think, Oh, we're in the car. Oh, this is where he likes to put his hand on, on his leg. Okay. Pick up your hand and put it on his leg. All right. Now just leave it there. And don't, don't think about anything. Like he's just going to be super excited. And she goes, she said, Elisa, I read that part in the book. And I just burst out laughing because that's the exact same thing that I grew through. And I thought I was the only one. I'm like, honey, you're not the only one. So, so you <laughs> thought that was weird, right? So you just, you were like, oh, that's so weird. And what did he say? It just, it was, it's not my default to think. Right, right, right. Like, exactly. Let me go do that. And he, you know, he knows, he can see the wheels turning when I'm like going through the thought process. Oh, <laughs> 
And, you know, he's shared on many an interview. He said, you know what? I, he, he still thinks it's weird that I have to put so much thought into it. <laughs> um, he's, he's still fabricated yeah. that, that you can't me, just honey. automatically do it, right? But he'll tell anyone the end result is the same. Yes. yes. So okay. we'll, as long as Elisa, like, I don't care that I see smoke coming out of her ears while she's trying to think this through. If she ends up with her hand on my leg while I'm driving, all is right with the world. I don't care. All how right. Wonderful. There. What I care is that that's, that's the intimacy that's being developed and that she, even if it takes her more effort, is willing to do it. That's how he So have it. you ever been in the car and you completely forgot because your mind is somewhere else? And then oh. he turns over and looks at you and go, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be an every time thing, but there are times when he'll just be like, hey, and I'm like, oh, I know what that means. It means it's all I'm to do. That's and, so cute. And in all honesty, we, we've we worked so hard on all of the pillars that, and this is not to say we don't have fights. We still do have fights. We are human. We have different opinions, mm-hmm. but we've developed the ability to actually be able to call each other out in areas in a loving way to say, "Wonderful, this is what I need. And I'm just going to ask you for it because it might not be on your radar screen right now. And it, that doesn't mean you don't love me. It doesn't mean you aren't thinking about me. It just exactly. means you're distracted and I'm going to bring you back into us. And that's part of, like you said, the growth of communication, the growth of growing <laughs> together, understanding that it's not a you have to or I'm demanding this of you. It's where, hey, I'm maybe preoccupied. So like you said, that's good. Calling each other out. Yeah. Tina used to get on me because uh, (laughs) she's like, don't leave the house without kissing me. Uh Uh-huh. Sometimes we would have have little fights, just a little like the night before he may get upset. Yeah, and I'm, so I'm out of here. And I so see the you next later morning, on. you know, the next morning he would get up and <laughs> I think he would intentionally not kiss me. I, and no, I, baby, like, I was rushing out. You know, I was trying to get to the <laughs> appointment. <laughs> Gotta get to work. Yeah, see? Right, right. So I would text and say, hey, for some reason, I don't remember getting a kiss this morning. I'm but like, I'm like, you still wanted one? I'm like, weren't we mad at each other? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but you know, you, you grow. So it forces you to still interact when you yeah. had a dis- when you having a disagreement because in the end or it it's forces just you to a grow. disagreement yeah it right? forces you to grow I, I, just too. because we disagree don't mean i don't i don't love you i mean right. we just had a disagreement at this moment but it teaches us how to work past that and how to develop more communication especially when we disagree with something and it's okay earlier to disagree. in the marriage right earlier yeah now it's like yeah babe mwah, what <laughs> right. am i gonna be late for this appointment or what you know so- <laughs> now you're like hey this is going well. I might be late for that appointment. You know? hey, yeah. Right now, it's not a rush to get to work anymore, right? Exactly. <laughs> There's no rush to get to work. No, no rush. Oh my god. Yeah, but unfortunately, someone blew when they said, "Well, they leave, but some they come back." The so, wind, so the wind keeps blowing back. Yeah, you every know? now and then yeah. they come back, and we keep threatening to change the locks, but we haven't done that yet. Yeah. So, what is one of the biggest, the biggest tips that you would give a married couple right now that was in the place you were in 12 years ago Take or 14. Is it 12 or 14? So 14. Four, okay. 14 years ago is when we did the challenge. 12 years ago is when we started the podcast. All right. Um, if, so if 14 you, years ago. Yeah. If you're in that place, take action for your marriage, put each, put each other first, see what happens when you shift, whether it's the kids are taking your attention, um, work's taking your attention, family's taking, whatever it might be, turn. And I was just sharing this with somebody yesterday. When you guys got married, you said, I do pretty. I mean, even if people were writing all their own vows at some point in time in the ceremony, they're saying, I do. Right. I mean, love right. Beyond, I do. You guys right. are all about, <laughs> you didn't say I did. Right. You didn't say I will. You said, I do get back into being present and taking action, looking at each other and saying, I do. What does that mean? It means I do have conversations with you. I do engage in flirting with you. I do go on dates with you. I do talk finances with you. I do talk faith with like, get back to that point. Instead of saying all of that stuff was in the past and we don't do it anymore. Get back to the present and take action. Wonderful. I love it. I love it. So do I. Can you, before we get out of here, I want to, I want to break down some of these uh, pillars here. Can you give me like your, uh, your highlights from each one. Mm-hmm. Like, give me, give me my your leading, uh, your 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 lasting. Uh, uh, what I want to say. I don't know. <laughs> if you want, Jason, do you want like each pillar and then like an action item for it? What, what when you say that would be perfect. Yeah, give me some action okay. items to help. Let, okay. let, let's help some of these listeners out. Or your highlight, your 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 most important part of that particular pillar. pillar. 
Okay, so emotional intimacy, again, this is the verbal and nonverbal communication. Um, for couples, you know, one of the biggest action points with this is making time to talk. All right. <laughs> so often we're just like skimming through and we're not making time. Um, the next one, physical intimacy, right? How you're touching all the non-sexual touch. With this one, ask your spouse how they like to be touched. It may not be the same thing that it was 20 years ago when you got married. Just Absolutely. Saying. Guarantee sure. it's not. <laughs> yeah. A financial intimacy, right? Everything related to your finances. I would say, you know, if you've been married 10, 15, 20 years, it might be time to sit down and have all of the what if conversations, right? Like, do we have our estate plan in place? What does that look like for us to be providing? I, I call the estate plan the last gift because of how it takes care of people after someone is gone. Okay. Yep. So doing that for one another, your spiritual intimacy. This is everything re related to your spiritual practices, faith, prayer, start praying together. If you are not already praying together mm -hmm. out loud, like be bold and pray out loud. Because when you hear your spouse pray out loud and what their heart, what's on their heart and what they're saying, it is such a place of vulnerability. Uh, recreational intimacy, stop playing the game where you sit in the car and you say, what do you want to do? Oh no. What do you want to do? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Stop being irritated with each other. Fun is not a bad word. It's not a bad, you know, F word. It's actually a really good one. Yeah. Having fun again. Take the lead and plan a date and just sweep him or her off their feet and say, hey, I've planned the date. One day where you don't have to make decisions is a really good day. Right? We make a lot of decisions. Yes, that's true. With sexual intimacy, initiate. If you're not the one that initiates, initiate sex. It will be a really good thing for your spouse. If you are on the other side where typically you're the one initiating, flirt with your spouse. It doesn't have, just have to be a, hey, want to have sex? Romance them. Flirt with them. Bring in that holistic experience because it's not just, yeah, we're having, you know, like you were saying earlier, Tina Marie, it's not just the action. It's actually the connection, right? So that's what that looks like. In a nutshell, ideas for all six. All right. So again, tell us the name of your book. Tell us every place where they can get it and where they can reach you Perfect. for more of this wonderful information. Yeah. The name of the book is The Six Pillars of Intimacy. It's this fabulous purple right here. Uh, you can go to sixpillarsofintimacy.com. It's available on Amazon. All Basically, if there's a bookstore, you can get it. Um, as far as connecting with me, oneextraordinarymarriage.com is everything that we are. It's all the podcast episodes, all of the resources, and the best way to get in touch with me. You can and what that. about Instagram and Facebook? One Extraordinary Marriage. We're, we're One Extraordinary Marriage everywhere you would want to look. All right. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Thank That's you. Right. All right. Any other questions, Jace? Uh, nope. I hope, I hope Tony is feeling well. Thank you. Um, you know, yes. tell him we said hello. And definitely you got to come back and have Tony on. And, so uh, we can laugh more. Yes. So we can get Tony's side. Tell Tony we didn't get his side. <laughs> I will let him know that he was missed and that I just made up every all of his answers. No, I know we, enough, I can tell you his, but yes, we'll have him back on. The yes, phone. sounds good. Sure. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for being our guest. We truly um it was enlightening yes, it was. and educational at the same time. Right. And we know that um, our message, yours as well as ours, putting this out there will help marriages today and hopefully in the future because marriage should be taking on a different, you know, hopefully we're trying to change the perception of marriage yep. and the taboo around it. So we know that we can all be happily married. And so we're just trying to encourage that the best way possible. Love all it. right. Love so, it. all right. So as always, we're, We're in, in it, it to win, win it. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Lovin' Beyond the I Do podcast. Head over to iTunes to subscribe and leave a review. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Legendary Relationship or visit our website at legendaryrelationship.com. Till next time, remember to make every day count.